It's time for game two of the St. Catherine University MLK Classic. We're here at the Butler Center throughout the day. Game two of our marathon is the Cloquet Lumberjacks and the Holy Angels Stars. Cloquet, a team we don't get to see often. They are well up in the north, section 73A to be precise. And Holy Angels, no stranger to us on the TSB Television YouTube channel. They sit at nine and three. Cloquet, 11 and two. Data limited on Cloquet, so I can't give you a whole lot of information, but some players to watch, according to Heather Young, the head coach, include Quinn Danielson, a four foot 10 guard, but plays a lot bigger than that. Alexis Nesrud and Ava Carlson. Ava Carlson has considerable vertical, so keep an eye on the junior number 22. And for Holy Angels, their big names, Kaylee Karen, Kira O'Rourke, and Jenna Beard, Jenna leading the team in scoring, 14 and a half points per game. Ella Pritchard not far behind at 9.2, also the top rebounder. In fact, she is six away from 1,000 in her career. Holy Angels had a couple of losses, one to De La Salle, one of their top tri-metro rivals, and then Kind of a strange loss to Bloomington Jefferson. Recently, they had runaway wins over Fridley and Richfield. And for Cloquet, again, they're in section seven, the same section that Grand Rapids resides in. So Cloquet, they're putting together a solid campaign. They've been in the top 10 most of the season. and perhaps have an opportunity to dethrone Grand Rapids. Cloquet ranked as high as eighth recently. They're wearing the purple, Holy Angels wearing the white as we are underway here at the Butler Center. This is O'Rourke to Karen. Jenna Beer, elbow J no good, and the rebound to Alexis Stesru. Now, some of these Cloquet names I've seen before in the AAU circuit, but I live down here. Cloquet is way up there. Uh, one of two northern teams to take part in this Invitational. We'll see another one in Duluth Marshall in our next game. Just underway here. Holy Angels biding their time right now, working the perimeter. They'll set up Elizabeth Pierce. Her jumper is short. And the rebound collected by Snezrud after a quick dash. Offensive rebound to Ava Carlson, but she's amidst a lot of traffic. She did draw the foul, though, and will shoot two. And numbers have been updated now for Cloquet. Ava Carlson averaging 13.2 points per game. Season high 18. Snezrud is the team leader at 19.1 with a season high of 29. And Cloquet gets us started with a pair of free throws. And something I wanted to point out when I do my research, especially for a game like this or a day like this where you have multiple games in a day, you often have to do your work in advance. So sometimes teams can fall a little bit behind. All the Angels working the inside. Kaylee Karen comes up short. Karen has had a feast or famine kind of year. And Macy majorly unable to convert the layup. Ella Pritchard brings the ball up. Remember, she's six away from 1,000 entering today. Jenna Beer, step back three. Off the window, no good. And that will be a dead ball tie-up. All the Angels with the possession arrow. 
Cloquet does have a game with Grand Rapids scheduled on February 2nd. And Holy Angels, it's all about a potential rematch with Benilde St. Margaret's in section 6-3A this year. The two teams met last year, split the series, but Benilde St. Margaret's won the money game. Kaylee Karen, money from the baseline there. Kaylee, the fourth of five sisters in the Karen clan. Her big sister Cassie playing at Missouri Western. Kaylee still looking for a place to play. Ella Pritchard, no good. And that was the four foot 10 Quinn Danielson. I've seen a lot of 5'2", five 5'3", five athletes over the years. Danielson might be the shortest I have ever seen in a varsity game. O'Rourke with the steal, Kaylee Karen chases down her own rebound and fires again. Stayed in the field of play, so another offensive rebound, this time from Buer. Kaylee Karen though off to a slow start. Buer cuts inside and she is unable to make the layup. We've seen this a bit out of Holy Angels this season where they run their sets fine. They just have a hard time knocking down shots. And when you look at the field goal numbers, that has happened to a lot of their big names. A lot of them shooting around 33%. A little unusual, but still not to be underestimated. Holy Angels, they play deep, they play fast, and they're always in the conversation. O'Rourke to Buer. Driving kick, Pierce for three. Rebound, Alexis Snezrud. And Macy Majorly converts a fast break for our first field goal. Touch three, no good. And Pritchard called for the foul. Pritchard came over from Crystal Ray Jesuit where she played her first two years. Known for her rebounding, her offense taking a little while to cultivate, but working her way there. Danielson, pass intercepted by Jenna Beer. Outlet pass to Kaylee Karen. Layup is strong, but they had a trailer in Vivian Carter. Vivian missed the start of the season due to injury, but has been an impact player since last year when she joined the team as an eighth grader. And that is O'Rourke with the block on number 13, Carly Johnson. Buer for three, short. And a dead ball rebound to the Lumberjacks. And with it, some more substitutions, including Celia Lind. Keep an eye out on Celia. She can produce offense in a hurry. Aaron Kennedy also on the floor. Holy Angels not afraid to flex that depth of theirs. They won. The Class 3A state tournament back in 2016. Reached the tournament every year up until last year. And there's a chance we could see them again. They didn't show all of their tricks in the first game with Benilde St. Margaret's and I'm guessing the Red Knights maybe responded the same way. Alexa Snezrud has plenty of tricks on her own as she gets the elbow jumper to drop. 6-4.
Cloquet comes up with it. This is number 10, Lauren Hughes. Pump fake, Snezrud pulls up. That ball bounced around the rim, but not in. Eleven fifty eight left in the first half. And a sluggish start here in terms of offensive production. I think both sides still looking to find their mark. Lynn. Lost the ball on the dribble. And we're going the other way after Snezrud was unable to corral it. Push foul is called on Lauren Hughes. If you're curious, Cloquet, we mentioned their future date with Grand Rapids. They did play back in December 10th. Grand Rapids won that one, 62-49. Cloquet in the Lake Superior Conference and they have another date with Grand Rapids and what could decide the one seed. A walk with a quick acceleration move. And shooting free throws will be Ava Carlson. Now I have the score as 6 6. The board has it as 8 4. We'll have to get that sorted out here. Ava Carlson, the junior. Fifteen points or more in each of the last five games, including that season high 18 over Rock Ridge. And she blinks at the line. But Cloquet hustling to keep possession. And back to the line they go. We'll see Macy majorly take a couple of shots here. Majorly has yet to break the 10 point barrier. Came close. Season high nine with Duluth East. She makes both free throws and the score, I got it as 8-8 eight, eight, or 6-8. Six, eight. It is right, 8-6. Eight, 6-8, six. Six, eight, eight, six. It's five o'clock somewhere, right? Kylie Isendorf steals the kickout pass. Can't get the friendly bounce, but a dead ball rebound will keep it here. 10.39 left in the first half. Holy Angels, we noted they end the regular season with Providence Academy. And they have a rematch with De La Salle February 7th. I think those are your key games remaining. Holy Angels with the turnover following the Aaron pass from Kira O'Rourke.
Carlson. Shovel their feet, that's traveling. unusual to see a score like this. Elizabeth Pierce hoping to change that. The Holy Angels, this has been the story of their season. Where they've run into some trouble shooting from the floor. And when that happens, their offense seems to stall, but that tends to happen when anybody isn't able to shoot as well as they'd like. They're getting plenty of defensive stops, though, as we remain at an 8-6 score. And more line change subs. We have to get the scoreboard corrected. It's right, but Cloquet listed as the home team? And compared to Anoka Ramsey and, and some other schools where their Dactronics boards allow you to enter whatever name you see fit, and then you have gyms with video screens that can take it a step further. I see the foul tally was offline. 9.41 left. This event, of course, staffed by members of the St. Catherine University women's basketball team, the Wildcats. And some of them might not have experience running the scorebook or scoreboard at least compared to other folks so they have to get the score and the foul situation switched. They had it right, they just had it on opposite sides. So slight delay here with 941 left in the first half. But everything appears to be corrected. The score was right, but again, this is a little different compared to most invitationals that we covered. The home team is in the white, light colored jersey, and the road team is in the dark. Karen slips the outlet to Pierce. She missed down low. If Holy Angels can get out of this funk, you would start to see that offense flow like a stream. They're right there. And I think offensively, they have more firepower than Cloquet does, but they're not getting those point blank looks to drop. They're not getting Anything to drop, it seems. Eight fifty seven left in the first half.
Beer. Side fade, swish. Let's see if that opens a few opportunities on the part of Holy Angels. We know Beer can put up big numbers. Hesitation move, Alexis Nesrud put on the brakes to let the coverage go by. That set her up for a wide open J. And she drains calmly. Three short, and Ava Carlson will collect the rebound. Cloquet looking to run it. Lead pass a little long, and scooped up by Ella Pritchard. Beer, touch three, is there. This could be the signal that Holy Angels was seeking. Karen deflects and steals the pass. Beer with another chance. Said she'll kick out, long two, no good. On the other end, Kylie Isendorf is called for traveling. Spun herself around at the high post and that cost her. Well, the Angels calls a timeout. Seven thirty nine left in the first half. With this, we like to remind you that if you'd like to support TSP television sports programming, we have three ways for you to do so PayPal, Patreon, and Cash App, patreon.com slash TSP television, PayPal and Cash App at TSP television. Eleven ten the score in a battle of ranked teams, Holy Angels and Cloquet. Holy Angels dropped a few spots following the loss to De La Salle. The most recent rankings moved them into the eighth spot and Cloquet went back to 15th. But again, Cloquet was as high as eighth. And still a team to monitor in section 73A. And what could be an epic showdown? That was an epic three pointer for Kaylee Karen. We've seen Kaylee at her worst in terms of shooting percentage. She, her family, and I think everyone else for Holy Angels is hoping we get to deserve her at her best. If you. Know that saying, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. So Kaylee Karen with a couple of field goals. And Holy Angels with the 14-10 lead. Cloquet had a little bit of trouble on the entry pass, but Ava Carlson is able to gather herself and move in for the layup. First field goal for Ava Carlson. Elizabeth Pierce. Kaylee Karen from the right corner, too strong. Elizabeth Pierce maneuvered into position. That's number 11, Charlotte Henry. And Holy Angels scores. To make it 16-12. Long skip, Quinn Danielson no good on the baseline jumper. Weak side rebound for Ava Carlson and back to the line she goes. Ava Carlson the junior and 
likely going to be one of the key pieces for next year's Cloquet team. Blue collar basketball is how they describe their style of play. And as I noted earlier, this invite and several others gives us a chance to look at teams we may not ordinarily see. Holy Angels, we get to cover a lot of their games owing to our coverage as Jenna Beer goes to the line. Beer, the leader in scoring for the Stars, not shooting as well as she would like. But she's had a couple of 24-point games. Had 24 against De La Salle and 24 against Jefferson. So Beer not having any trouble performing in some of the bigger games. She also had 21 against Visitation. Deep three off the front iron. And remember, it's the gray line, that's the three-point line, but instinctively players look for the first line, and oftentimes at college courts, it's going to be the college line. Although we have seen a few players mindful of that, knowing they didn't have to back all the way from the college line. And as we've seen over the years, high school, college, and pro, three-point shooting so ubiquitous that most of these players can knock down from deep. Pierce looking to do just that. But that's another example. As she airballed the three, she's squared up behind the purple line, which is the college line. Nezrud on the run. Rebound and the putback for Ava Carlson. 17-15. Tight game between two 3A teams on the short list of contenders. Kylie Isendorf takes the ball for herself. But the drive was sent away and the ball goes off of her, so Holy Angels gets the ball back. With 4.14 to go in the first half. Pritchard. That's Carter. And she lost the ball to Danielson. Heather Young did note that because of Danielson's size, four foot 10, that does create some unusual side effects in terms of how you guard her. The ball handling and where she is on the floor. going the other way. Danielson's frame would be a more likely sight in gymnastics than basketball, but if you've watched our coverage over the years and we have been on hand for hundreds of games, height, just a number. Kira O'Rourke thinking of the number three, which is how many points she earns on that shot. 2015, Holy Angels slowly inching forward. Beer with the steal. Wants to go in for the finish and she'll shoot two. Beer, 78% free throw shooter on the season. 
Picked up her first double-double, 13 points and 10 rebounds against Richfield in their most recent game. Knocks down both this time. And she's got eight. Isendorf, the bounce pass to Carlson. Eva too strong, now Cloquet is having some difficulties on short range plays. Holy Angels with the possession arrow, which will give them an opportunity to extend a seven point lead. Aaron Kennedy curled up, fired, missed. Now O'Rourke is there. Isendorf used up the dribble in the backcourt. Needed help. Macy Majorly with the bounce pass to Carlson. And this time, Eva lands the finish. O'Rourke goes baseline, comes up short. However, the miss is tipped back to her. Holy Angels with three chances, no points. And that was just a dead ball call, no foul there. Had there been one, Cloquet would have been awarded a trip to the free throw line as the Lumberjacks look to get back on track. They trail 25-17. Quick set, three is long. Beer sets up for three. And that's an over the back foul on Aaron Kennedy, so Cloquet will go to the line, as that was a loose ball foul. And the officials pointing that out. And yes, they are in the bonus. So we'll see who goes to the line. It's going to be Danielson. One and one. And that gets Danielson on the board. It's a split for Danielson. She had 18 points in the win over Rock Ridge. Jenna Beer gets two points on the layup. And she's got 10. Cloquet, the outlet pass too long and they end up throwing it away. Fifty-eight seconds left in the first half. And Holy Angels converts the high-low play. Kaylee Karen getting the friendly bounce. Beer and Karen bring the pressure. And free throws coming for Celia Lind after Beer and Karen created a turnover.
Lynn missing the front end. She makes one of two. And the Stars almost had the steal, but Cloquet takes it right back. That allows Alexis Snezrud to score in transition. 30 to 20 though, Stars with a 10 point lead. And a traveling call on Beer as she tried to move the ball to the lane. An unfortunate miscue on the part of Holy Angels and the Lumberjacks. Won't have a chance to respond. Holy Angels, we've seen this before. They went to a pressure defense almost exclusively in the Bidon St. Margaret's game. But some of that was part of strategy, knowing that you might see them again in sections. But it's produced some key swings of momentum here. That's going to be another traveling call as Kaylee Karen shuffled her feet just a little bit, enough to lead to the turnover. And another one forced by the inbound pressure. And then Cloquet gets it back. Are they going to have time to get a shot off? Snezrud has got to move. And that concludes our game of hot potato, at least for the moment. It's halftime with Holy Angels leading Cloquet 30 to 20. Stars looking for the third straight win. Cloquet looking to bounce back after a tough loss to Crosby Ironton and Toy Erline. This battle of 3A teams will continue when we return. You're watching the MLK Classic at St. Catherine University. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want us to hide anybody? Oh. Oh, I don't know. That put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Second half about to start at the Butler Center where Holy Angels leads Cloquet 30 to 20. Part of the MLK Classic now hosted by St. Catherine University. It originally began as a Minnesota Fury event. St. Catherine's taken over and has continued one of our annual traditions in the high school basketball season. Leading scores for the first half, Ava Carlson leads the Cloquet Lumberjacks with nine. Alexa Snezrud has six. For Holy Angels, Jenna Beer with 10. Kaylee Karen with seven. Kira O'Rourke with eight. Holy Angels looking for the third straight win. Cloquet looking to add a signature win to their resume. Again, they're coming off that big loss to Crosby Ironton. And Kaylee Karen starts the second half with an inside penetration play that leads to a layup. So Holy Angels brings the press again. We saw them implement it with much success against Hutchinson, not so much against Benil St. Margaret's and De La Salle. They just ran out of gas at the end. They're looking pretty strong here. Inside, again, it's Elizabeth Pierce and Holy Angels inflicting some damage down low to start the second half. Cloquet says we can do that too as Ava Carlson converts the skip from Kylie Isendorf.
O'Rourke. Long skip to Beer for three. Bullseye. Jenna Beer feeling it, and that's a good sign for Holy Angels, who leads 37-22. Cloquet does have some state tournament history, although they haven't been to the Big Dance since 2004. And they have a tough out with Grand Rapids. Quinn Danielson turns a touch three into points. Remember, she's averaging 8.8 .8 a game, had 18 against Rock Ridge, so don't let her diminutive frame fool you. She can score. But Cloquet, again, haven't been to the state tournament since 2004. They went 20-8 last year. Grand Rapids, though, went undefeated in conference play. Jenna Beer draws contact on the slash and she'll go to line for two. Jenna Beer was a welcome surprise last season as a sophomore for the Stars. She likes painting and drawing in her spare time. Missed the front end there. Three 20 point games this season. And Holy Angels typically, they don't have a runaway score even in the years of Frankie Vassalero and company. Splits at the line there and a 13 point lead for Holy Angels are looking to continue this win streak and they have a big game tomorrow with Robbinsdale Cooper. Now the Hawks are going to be an underdog in section 6-4A but they could be a force in the conference. They have been already. O'Rourke to Pierce. She goes baseline, unable to hit. Carlson collects the rebound, still a 13 point advantage for the Stars. Ella Pritchard threw it right into Alexa Snezrud's path. That's gonna set up a jumper. And Pritchard collects the rebound. Now again, she's closing in on 1,000 and the Holy Angels student section is ready if she can get that mark today. A little harder to keep track of rebounds than it is points at this level. Not every team shares that information on stat pages, but also it's just tough when you're trying to keep track of everything. Like that three-pointer from the key by Alexis Snezru. Snezru again, the team leader in scoring. Hasn't decided on a college yet. Hoping to find a few options. So it's a 10 point game. Here's Pritchard. Hassled on the drive. She'll go to the line for two after collecting her own miss. I remember talking to the coaching staff before the De La Salle game earlier this year and they said it, what might have been had Pritchard been able to start with Holy Angels, but gave them a defensive anchor. Offensively, she's doing a lot better this year than last. Not the strongest of scores, but not a pushover either. And she splits at the line. Here comes more of that pressure, though, from Holy Angels. Oh, yes. 
Butler Center, one of the smaller venues in the Mayak and in the state. But it gives us a bird's eye view of the action. Here is O'Rourke, multi-sport athlete. The skip to Jenna Buer for three more. Jenna Beer is having herself a game, and if she finds her stroke, it usually means trouble for opponents. She's got 17. Gritty play down low by the Lumberjacks, and Carlson, who has received plenty of trips to the free throw line, will get Another chance here. Carlson again, 15 points or more in each of the last five games. 18 against Crosby Ironton, 18 against Rockridge. She splits, and both teams identical in free throw shooting. Six of ten, that's a little unusual. Carlson also had 17 in a one-point win over Proctor. Here's Buer. Well, the Angels moving the ball around. They find Buer open. Another three, you bet. 20 points, Jenna Beer has her fourth 20 point game this season. And I don't think it's much of a stretch to say that when she performs well, Holy Angels finds a way to get in contention. Now a couple of those 20 point games came in losses, so you can't depend solely on her, but having her as an anchor has kept them in games. no matter which end of the score they're facing. Here's Cloquet, Danielson, to Carlson, who has seen plenty of activity. And I'm running out of words to describe her impact in this game. She has a chance for a three-point play. That being said, Cloquet still has some work to do as they trail 45-31. Elizabeth Pierce looks to be a little shaken up. She heads back to the line or the bench. No three-point play for Carlson. But Carlson does have 14 points. Snezrud has nine. Not much support elsewhere though. And that can be a problematic against a group like Holy Angels. Two newcomers to this event. And Cloquet will call a timeout. Holy Angels and Cloquet, both newcomers. Again, this started as a Minnesota Fury-based event. So a lot of high school teams with Fury connections would make the trek out here on Martin Luther King Day. The Fury no longer involved, but their director, Nick Storm, he has a lot in his plate between his AAU duties and being a father to several female athletes. But St. Catherine has continued this tradition. Martin Luther King Day has become quite synonymous with high school hoops. There are a few invites going on today, but this is the biggest of them all for Martin Luther King Day weekend. What used to be just another day off on the calendar has taken deeper meaning over the last few years. I was at the Gophers fighting Illini women's game yesterday and several players and coaches read one of Dr. King's speeches, Martin Luther King that is. And this event, 
a great way for teams that maybe not normally wouldn't be able to participate or get a chance to display their talents in front of a Metro audience. That's where a lot of the scouts are and a lot of the writers and broadcasters. Cloquet certainly one of them and having St. Catherine take over, expanded the field, they've turned this into an all day event and it was that way with the Fury but now you have a bigger mix of teams. And since this is a federal holiday, no school to worry about. Not too often you get excited for Monday hoops, but this is one of those exceptions. We'll talk a little more about that as we move along about this event and the significance as Jenna Buer exerting her significance. That's another steal. Touch three. Not that time, but Celia Lind was in position underneath for the putback. And almost a steal. That is Carolyn Vessel. Holy Angels. Typically, Holy Angels is one of the deepest in terms of the players they send in. On my score sheet, it's not uncommon for me to have maybe one or two spaces left compared to some other groups. They lead by 16. Danielson fakes the three. If you're following us on the YouTube channel, TSB Television, Holy Family and Duluth Marshall will follow this game. Three from the corner. Not there. Vessel lost it. Danielson, deep three. Swish. Quinn Danielson with seven and She's starting to find her stroke and put in some points. Can she put in a few more? We shall see. Still a 13 point lead for the Stars. Jenna Beer weaves through traffic and almost got the shot to bank in. Instead we have a tie up. Cloquet with the arrow, 9.52 left in the second half. Cloquet trying to get the outlet play off and couldn't quite hook up. And a substitution coming in. One of the Developments in women's basketball, by the way. Maya Moore officially retiring. And here's Alexa Snezrud, who will shoot two. Again, Snezrud, the leader in scoring for the Lumberjacks. Snezrud, again, some impressive performances this season, missing the front end. Season high 29 against Princeton. She had a stretch of four 20 point games in a row with Masabi East, Rockridge, Proctor, and Esco. Recently, she, she bleh, 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 that's all folks, scored 21 against Crosby Ironton. Another split though for the Lumberjacks. They're going to have to work a little more efficiently if they want to score a comeback win and pick up a resume building victory. Kira O'Rourke has no interest in allowing that to happen as she stepped into the elbow J. And almost got the steal, but tipped it over to Carlson. And Cloquet throws it away. 9.02 left in the second half. And 
Again, Maya Moore officially announcing her retirement this morning on Good Morning America. WNBA, in particular, Lynx fans suspected she had moved on from basketball, and over the last few years, it became pretty clear that Elizabeth Pierce would knock down the three. Assist by Karen. I was going to say, over the years, it became pretty clear that we weren't going to see her in uniform again after she got her now husband, Jonathan Irons, out of prison following a wrongful conviction and then started a family. We all knew it was going to happen, but by making the retirement official, as Snezrud sinks the elbow J for Cloquet, making the retirement official will allow Maya to receive recognition that she frankly deserves. Kira O'Rourke, whoa! They left the lane wide open. Kira says, thank you very much. Back and forth this game goes. 54-37. Subs coming in. Maya Moore, of course. Phenom with the Lynx. We'll never know how many more achievements she could have added had she decided to continue playing, but with what she accomplished in a short span of time, four titles and just about everything you could possibly imagine, there really was nothing left for her to prove. That's not to say athletes like that quit in that circumstance. We saw Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi. Sue Bird played until she was into her 40s. Diana Taurasi doing the same thing. Taj McWilliams Franklin, some players like to stick it out, but Maya, I don't blame her for calling it a career when she did. A foul on the Stars. They have one more to give, and Holy Angels will call a timeout. Well, that gives me a little more time to talk about Maya Moore and her achievements. I don't know how many of these players grew up watching her because Maya's last pro season was five years ago. Some of these athletes were a lot younger back then, but she was part, very much part of the genesis of women's basketball here in the state of Minnesota. Four-time champion, 2014 MVP, six-time All-Star. And again, what the retirement does, I think some of us, myself included, were waiting to, for her to make it official. I was wondering if we were going to get such an announcement because she would never liked to make it about herself, not unlike some current players that I've had the pleasure of covering, like Kennedy Sanders. A lot of the Hopkins kids come to mind. But now that she's retired, it means the Lynx will be able to retire her jersey and in a few years time, she'll be eligible for the pro bat or the Basketball Hall of Fame, not pro basketball. Well, yeah, the Basketball Hall of Fame. I'm sure she will be a first ballot inductee. Kind of thought to myself, the reason why she hadn't announced her retirement yet, maybe she was still thinking about it, but I suspected after it was clear that she was done playing basketball <laughs> that she might not say much because it would require her to do the one thing she never sought, and that's be the center of attention. Some of my colleagues were a little bummed knowing that we won't see her in uniform again. Here's Kaylee Karen for three. No good, but I think I was at peace with it. When it became clear her interests went beyond professional sports. So Maya Moore, likely an inspirational figure for so many athletes.
on this floor and beyond. Still a big lead for Holy Angels, 54-37. And they have produced a litany of turnovers against Cloquet. They have not given the Lumberjacks much breathing room in this game. And that has allowed the Stars to slowly pull away. Not the prettiest game we've seen out of Holy Angels, but they're getting enough, including a fine performance by Jenna Beer, but Cloquet getting an equally proficient performance out of Ava Carlson, who scores down low. Carlson with 16. But without a shot clock, I'm not sure there's enough time. Cloquet forcing the turnover there. Danielson for three. High Karen bounces over to Majorly. Danielson may get another chance. The defense collapses on her before she could get open. And Majorly throws up a shot. Good defense there by Holy Angels, not giving a whole lot of space for Cloquet to operate in that possession. This is Pierce. Majorly sends that shot away. In this event, even when the Fury ran this, I believe last year was the final year of the Fury event, maybe 2020 actually, but they had, did a good job bringing in a mix of teams as well. The breakdown tip-off classic, I'd say remains at the top of the list. And then you have the opening weekend invitationals as Pierce takes another pass away. Holy Angels up by 15, 54-39. Beer for three, not that time. And Cloquet can't get the outlet play in cleanly. This event, maybe not as prestigious as your tip-off events at Hamlin or St. Thomas Academy, the Breakdown Tip-Off Classic. But the significance of this event on MLK Day, not lost on me, and for a lot of these teams, it represents the midpoint of the season. When you start looking at QRF scores, rankings, all of that as Elizabeth Pierce, not Pierce, Ella Pritchard. Ella Pritchard with her first field goal on that drive. Ava Carlson continuing to slice through the Holy Angels defense like butter. She has 18 points, but I don't know if Cloquet has enough time. Carlson not getting a lot of help here. Pritchard with the layup on the last drive. And an assist on this possession to Kaylee Karen for two more. Karen with 11. 319 to go. Holy Angels methodically building a lead. That's their last foul to give with 314. This event, by the way, was not held in St. Catherine for the last couple of years. Our last time here at the Butler Center was 2020. 21, of course, there was no 
event, no invitationals at all because of you know what. In 2022, we had Omicron wreak havoc and all of the games that were scheduled here were reassigned to other venues. I ended up, Holy Family Catholic actually ended up hosting that. Pritchard, lob a little too high for Karen. She comes in with the steal and wastes little time throwing the shot up. She'll shoot two. Ella Pritchard had a season high 15 points against Shakopee, averaging 9.2 again, improving as a score in three games this season with 11 rebounds or more. Missing both free throws, but academic at this stage. This will be a fine win for the Stars. Alexa Snezrud won't go away quietly though. She drops the three. But Holy Angels after a couple of bumps losing to De La Salle who may be the favorites again in 3-3-A after a slow start on their end, and then Bloomington Jefferson. I don't think that was a loss they saw coming. To get back on track against a solid 3-A team will certainly help. You expect them to beat Fridley and Richfield. Cloquet was kind of a question mark. Another deep three. I've seen Cloquet, and I don't know how often they play in college gyms, but that is interesting to see all of the players who react to the first three-point line not realizing you can move in a step or two closer. One minute to go. David Carlson. With the steal, Snezrud completes the fast break play and gives us an encore. Snezrud, a fine performance here, even though it'll come up short. Holy Angels had a little more depth at their disposal. As Alexis Snezrud completes the three point play. Originally from Pennsylvania, As we've got a timeout, 49.5. That's not going to change the outcome of the game. But Cloquet will use one of them. Snezrud, originally from Pennsylvania, also played on the track and soccer teams at Cloquet. We saw Snezrud at the state soccer tournament for Cloquet, who made the big dance in girls soccer this fall. A reminder that following the conclusion of this game, if you're watching this on the TSB Television YouTube channel, our next game will be Holy Family Catholic and Duluth Marshall. Holy Family back at full strength. Duluth Marshall has one of the top seventh graders to keep an eye on. Someone who picked up a lot of attention last year and in the AAU season. Chloe Johnson. And you also have one of the fastest 1,000 point scores in state history, Regan Junman. 
But for this game, Holy Angels. Unofficially 20 points for Beer. Kira Rourke with 12, Kaylee Karen with 11. Yeah, not a pretty game, but it's gonna be a win for Holy Angels. As Ella Pritchard will shoot two. Notice the bench is a bit smaller today. There are no lower level games associated with this event. Butler Center not big in area compared to other venues. So it's just the varsity teams that pay a visit. And intriguingly, we've had a couple of games where everyone stayed in. Richard missing both free throws. That has not been a strong suit of hers this season. And we'll see if that has any impact later on. Danielson lines up another three. She's been feeling it all game. Eight point game, but not enough time with just 21 seconds. However, Danielson knocking down three triples, playing a lot bigger than four foot 10. And Heather Young really appreciative of her skills as a ball handler. And her tenacity, it's not easy to go in there when everyone is bigger than you. So okay, still had some fouls to give, but ultimately this is window dressing. Eleven seconds left, there's not enough time to make up eight points. without any clock stoppages. But Cloquet they'll play anyway. And you can understand that. And the clock doesn't stop for a made basket and I think Cloquet just has a couple of timeouts left anyway. One and one here for Ella Pritchard. Makes both that time, so a little icing on her cake. Good game for Snezrud. Pierce with the steal. And that's a final. 60 to 50. It's rare to see a first half and second half with symmetry in terms of the margin but both teams scoring 30 points in the frame. And the day belongs to the Stars who pick up their third straight win. Unofficially, Jenna Beer with 20 points, Kira O'Rourke with 12, and Kaylee Karen with 11. Gloke got a respectable effort out of Ava Carlson and Alexis Snezru. They finished with 18 each. So Holy Angels picks up their 10th win of the year. And they look to be back on track. Still some things to work on, but I'm sure they'll take this win nonetheless. So that does it for game two. Game three coming up, Holy Family Catholic and Duluth Marshall. You're watching the MLK Classic at St. Catherine University. <laughs> 